A franchise that hasn't had a release in 13 years just re-released a 20-year-old picture and trounced Disney at the box office. Let's talk about Shrek 2 on That Park Place. Hello, I am Jonas J. Campbell, a lovable ogre here for That Park Place. And with me is my friend who just won't stop talking, Mr. Vash Guy. Vash, are you doing all right? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Look, look, Jonas, it's my job to talk. What am I supposed to do? I, I, I can't <laughs> I can't sit silent while we have some amazing stories to bring to our audience. Come on. That's that, that's right. And of course, uh, you all know I have a dry sense of humor, so I cannot help myself but uh, bring up the irony of me saying that Vash is the one who uh, talks too much. OK, so let's talk about these re-releases of Pixar films that have gone uh, into theaters. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think the order here. I think it was Soul and then Turning Red and then Luca, uh, all making it into the box office. They finally got into the box office because originally they were not released into theaters. Vash, can you explain the situation very quickly? Yes. Uh, well, uh, this was around the time that Disney Plus was being launched. So in a desperate move for content and also to... Uh, theaters were shut down and so forth. There was a there was a pandemic going on. So the Disney company decided to recalibrate these films for not theatrical distribu distribution, but uh, Disney Plus exclusive distribution right there, which is a little bit different of a model that they were doing at the beginning of the pandemic where they would have simultaneous releases, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes. Yeah, so these originally were released on Disney Plus. Uh, mm -hmm. at, well, now there's some debate. Soul was definitely in that era when theaters were shut down. Uh, Luca, right. I do believe, was in that period when theaters were shut down. I'm not completely sure that Turning uh, Red was released when theaters sh shut down. Because uh, just, just for reference, uh, Spider-Man uh, No Way Home, December 13th of 2021, uh, December 17th right. in, in wide release, and Turning Red... Well, if uh, if we call that one a uh, COVID era release, uh, this one actually came out in on March 11th of 2022. So, uh, with that being said, let's go through these numbers. Let's say um, let's say in order. Let's start with Soul, and it looks like Soul at the box office made a total of 946 million. Let's talk about this opening weekend uh, number right here. Opening weekend gross 431 thousand dollars in its Ooh. opening weekend uh this one was Next. directed by pete doctor it's a story about a jazz piano player who dies and has unfinished business and wants to find fulfillment it's uh it, it's a hardest it's one of the hardest sells of a pixar concept that they've had in a very long time but of course after that uh, we have luca which i i gotta say this is actually one of my favorite pixar releases of the last five to six years uh this one only made 558 million at the box office when they released it in february uh sorry in uh, march of this year it's a it's kind of like a little mermaid story except that uh he can go back and forth he doesn't lose his voice goes into the italian countryside the same guy who directed a excellent short film called luca uh directed this one i don't know if michael giacchino did the soundtrack but it was an, an excellent uh movie with an excellent soundtrack enrico casarosa uh here yes oh and dan romer was actually the guy who did the soundtrack to this one mm, i actually I loved this one and uh intended to go see it in theaters but i uh, got a little busy that weekend vash did you go see this in theaters I did not see this in theaters, and I, I must confess, guys, I haven't seen this at all. It's just it was just kind of under the radar for me. So that's the other thing too with these films is that they weren't uh, particularly promoted all that well when they came out exclusive to Disney Plus, and then when they you know were eventually released in theaters uh, in a play that you know kind of made sense in order to fill what was a very lacking the uh, box office slate well right um, right you're, you're absolutely by that time, correct people didn't care disney disney this year has nothing to release in theaters they have a creative problem on top of there being a writer strike and uh and a and a, there was a director's guild negotiation but an actor strike and a writer strike last year so it pushed them back on top of there being a creative problem at the walt disney company but of course before we get to uh some of the things that they did to try to get people into theaters let's talk about turning red which came out in March of this year, of course, was also moved into Disney Plus instead of being put in theaters. But now that it's in theaters, we can see that it made $578 million in its opening weekend. So, uh, 
Sorry, sorry. What did I say? Yeah, five. Uh, did I say millions? I meant to say thousands. I'm so used to the million dollar figures being here that it was a little Same. bit of a, a slip here in consolidating these figures. Four hundred and thirty-one thousand, and then for Luca, it is five hundred and fifty-eight thousand. And then for Turning Red, we have five hundred and seventy-eight thousand. Uh, so let's go to. The crime at hand, this week's box office, domestic chart for April 12th, 2024, otherwise known as this last weekend. If we go down here and we look, did, I didn't even know that Shrek 2 was being re-released in theaters, but it was the number nine movie at the box office. And we see right here, $1.35 million in one weekend for a poorly marketed 20-year anniversary re-release of Shrek 2. By the way, my favorite of the Shrek films. I'm not I'm not discounting this movie in any way. I think it's great. I think it was a great ex the first one was a send up of Disney and the second one was like Shrek fully formed great movie. Vash, did you go see this one? Uh well, I believe 20 years ago, I think I may have seen this one actually in theaters right here. But yes, I have seen this film and honestly those early dreamworks productions are kind of like they're they're you know are they in the realm of like disney classics for example uh, some could debate but definitely cult classics for sure it just tells you the strength of some of these brands right here and from some of the older catalogs uh that is now within uh comcast's control uh yeah that's a that's a very good point and uh okay so uh, obviously we know that puss in boots last wish that came out not that long ago. We could technically say that's part of the Shrek franchise. It's an extension of the Shrek franchise. There are some references at the end of Puss in Boots Last Wish that they're going to go to the land where Shrek is. And Chris Melodondri, who is in charge of Illumination, right now the most successful animation producer in the world at the moment, other than if we want to go artistically, probably Hayao Miyazaki. Melodondri has specifically been put in charge of the Shrek franchise and reviving the Shrek franchise even though dreamworks doing pretty well on their own right now showing up to the box office last wish continued to make money at the box office week after week after week week it was in theaters for a much longer time than anything else and i do believe it beat out most disney animated features of the last four or five years for this to happen with Shrek 2, Shrek 2, they're not going to leave it in theaters. Uh, well, maybe they are, but Shrek 2 is not going to be in theaters more than maybe this one week. Maybe they'll add in a second uh, week here. But what does this say about the current state of the Walt Disney Company, the king of animation, and its, uh, its if we want to call it the count over here, Pixar and Walt Disney Animation, neither of them can bring people into the box office. But Shrek 2, a 20-year-old movie from DreamWorks, brings in $1.35 million effectively saying that without marketing you can just drop one of these things into theaters and there you go it's free real estate uh, well i think it says uh one don't take your very expensive animated product put it out on your streaming platform exclusively and then put it out in theaters that like one right at the bat don't do that <laughs> that's that's first off but second off it really does say something about the strength of, um, you know, Disney and really Pixar's brand at this point right here. Again, this was an acquisition from this company of seven billion dollars back in 2007 uh, to get Pixar under their control right here. And in a post Lasseter era, which started about onward, it just hasn't gone that great. And there's a multitude of, multitude of reasons for why uh, they've underperformed to the degree that they have. I'm not saying that they uh, that 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 you know that obviously what happened in 2020 was uh, very uh, profound for the uh, the Walt Disney Company and Pixar but uh, honestly under Pete Doctor's control i mean they they have really uh, tumbled from the top blockbusting spot where you know they 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 couldn't be uh, nobody could touch them in the anime animated realm in fact including Walt Disney Animation itself and now uh, it's like a lost leader brand, unfortunately. And it's really, really tragic. Right. Uh, for Pixar to be the better brand between Walt Disney Animation and Pixar, it reminds us of the 2004, 2005 era of the Walt Disney Company. But at the same time, neither brand is actually hitting that well. For DreamWorks and Illumination to have dueling studios that are both outperforming Disney. And, and, and I got to say, 
I, I don't really understand why they have not come up with a response here. I don't understand why they don't just call John Lasseter and say, yeah, do a, do a couple of movies here. We have a, you've had your James Gunn moment here. Let's bring you back into the studio and at least have you do something here. Of course, Lasseter is over there at Skydance Animation and his stuff. It sounds like it's all going to be on Netflix, which I think means that it will be more widely seen than a Disney Pictures release, which is really saying something. But that being said, we want to throw it to our commenters down below did you see any of these movies in theaters did you get the discount where you go to see one of these and you get free tickets to inside out too that didn't happen uh I promised i would mention that disney was pushing hard to try to get as much value into this as possible so they could make some free money and try to boost those inside out two figures by the way hearing good things out of cinemacon for inside out two we're gonna have an we're gonna have a video about cinemacon here in just a little bit on that park place so like this video if you like this video and of course consider subscribing to that park place for all the news that should be fun thanks for watching that park place news for more information consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com and don't forget to subscribe share like and send this out on your favorite social media accounts